We start in 27 minutes.
Hello, John. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Hey, fine. <laughs> nice hey, to see you again. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you uh, mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, Al Mefti is televising from Brazil starting mm -hmm. in February a couple of times a month. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you want to translate that into Chinese, uh, but uh, I send the information, okay? No okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I'll leave it up to you, you know. Uh, okay. If you want to, not fine. If no, that's okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I send you great. information. I send you information. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. And we're mm -hmm. also televising this in Japanese, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you want to, not fine. If no, that's okay. Let me introduce you. Take a, Takashi, are you there? His name is Takashi. Yeah, uh, uh, good evening, uh, John. Hey, yeah, I'd like you to meet hi, Ben. Uh, too. Hi, I'm Dr. Takashi. Hi. <laughs> Have you met this Ben is, before? Uh, let me let me get yes, you, you know, yes, last, yes, last time. <laughs> yeah, frequently. Uh, last time. Yes, frequently. Yes, yes, oh, okay. okay for Japanese good. attendees, uh, I will help to translate uh, the last oh, lecture. We're trying to cover two big populations. Two <laughs> big populations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, talk Last to time, talk uh, to when we uh, broadcast the uh, Professor Sano's presentation. Sano's presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, uh, I remember uh, Takashi is also here yeah. and uh, translation yeah, yeah. to Japanese. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, very how is the, yeah, how is the pandemic uh, in Japan? Uh, in Tokyo, uh, patients are uh -huh. growing, uh, gradually growing. So uh, uh -huh. sometimes the lockdown uh, in Tokyo, uh, some, like a lockdown, lockdown-like mm -hmm. situations in Tokyo. Okay. So most of the surgeries are postponed, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, only uh, except emergency. Mm -hmm. So our uh, brain tumor surgery, uh, sometimes uh, uh, some of the patients are, are postponed, uh, delayed oh. surgery. Okay. It's a, a problem for neurosurgeons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Miami, this, the vaccination is starting to be spread out. <laughs> uh, mo a lot of doctors have got the vaccination. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now study? working on the elderly population. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's pretty organized. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised, but uh, it's a big backlog. Elder population. Because th they gave me an email address to write to to make an appointment, but I haven't heard back. Oh. So they must be overloaded. Yeah. <laughs> oh. In China, we have a... Uh, Shijia is uh, locked down, and uh, only only one city. Okay, you still you yeah. cannot travel mm. between cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Yeah, we can travel. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, you are you there? You made it. <clears throat> yeah. We are here. Yeah, Professor Yuha. Hello. Hello. Happy New Year. Yeah. Hello, John. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah. I didn't think he'd make it for Good a to while. See you again. Yeah. Is Vinko here? Not yet. Not okay. yet, but I, I talked to him on the phone. Mm -hmm. and he said he's coming uh, in a few minutes. So, uh, so I, I was surprised. So you got your computer working, the connection's working, you are. Yeah, yeah, it's working now, yeah. Oh, okay. It's working now, yeah. Be because you can access with just a smartphone in Zoom, you can participate. Uh, not always, in China, China is changing, changing. Yeah. Sometimes like waves, waves. Sometimes you are connected, sometimes not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How is Miami? It's beautiful. It's dark now, but the sun will be out. This is the best time of year to be here. <laughs> uh, in January, yeah. Yeah, it is cool. cool. Yeah, well, you've been here, you have been. You've been. You've never been here, right? 
in Miami. Yeah, but, but, uh, last year, year, actually, I visited uh, Florida, uh, Florida two oh, times. Okay. Two times. Yeah. Uh, conference or just a visit? Uh, uh, I have uh, uh, some seminar in uh, Jacksonville and uh, Tampa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of conferences. Yeah. And um, some in Miami, mostly Orlando. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to go to Disney World. Mm -hmm. Disney World, yeah. <laughs> I was living in Miami more than one year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you live near the hospital? 92, or? 93. All work, right? Yeah. A lot of work. Yeah, it is, yeah. Vinko. Okay, Vinko. It's okay. Vinko here. Welcome, welcome. Vinko, Dominic. Yeah. Vinko, Hello. Oh, great pleasure. Hello. Hello, Hello Professor Hello. Vinko. Good evening. We are Hello, Vinko. Hello. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Huh? Hi. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Do you want to go over anything? Do you want to go over anything? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. I just okay. have the lecture in, you know. Okay. You remember how to screen share, right? Yeah. You want to practice their screen share? Yeah. I see you have your assistant there. That's great. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's just go through the screen share. Just a Yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> video. Uh, just a second. Uh, hold, hold, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing your Zoom. Uh, right? You want to change that screen? If you see this PowerPoint. Okay. Just go to your PowerPoint now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, share the PowerPoint. There you go. There you go. It's okay. Yes, yes, uh, and they're perfect, perfect right there. <clears throat> That's good. And now, are you going to play any videos, uh, Finko? Pardon? Are you going to play any videos? Yes, yes. Okay, sure. I just I just need to know uh, because I need okay. to set I, okay. I'll set it up quickly. Okay. That's no problem. So. Okay. But I have included them to the uh, to the lecture, so I go. I don't need to uh, to search in another uh, uh, file. File. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can you can get off the screen share now. Uh, we can start. No, no, you can get off the. We don't start for nine minutes. You can get off the screen share, so you can be introduced. Go off with the. Uh, yeah, you you can you can go back on the 
presentation, but just get off it for now. Okay. Yeah, just get off it. Yeah. yeah, at the top there, you should have an option of going off the screen. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. So. Very good. I was surprised you answered the phone when I called. <laughs> yeah, you were you were lucky because my phone was not working until yesterday. Oh, really? I got yeah, I got lucky. And all the services are closed because the COVID. Oh, oh, really? So I, I managed to, to <laughs> fix it somehow. <laughs> yeah. So, Yuha, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, when, when have you and Vinko been together? Uh, have you been together in Finland or? Uh, or uh, Vinko has been several times in Helsinki to operate on. So, and I have been also in Ljubljana. To visit months, months. Okay. Good times in Ljubljana, in Slovenia. Okay. It was our privilege to have you here. Yeah, it was wonderful times in Slovenia. So I came too late to you. I should have come earlier when I was younger. Mm. But anyhow, we had fine, a uh, nice time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, in Helsinki, you were doing wonderfully. So, where people came because of you to Helsinki. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I was surprised. Helsinki. What are look this year also here? I'm sorry? Warlux is also here. Oh, Warlux, yeah. Warlux, you there? Oh, yeah. Happy Good morning. Year. Good morning. Hello. Good evening from Thailand. Good evening. Uh, good morning, Dr. Kim Kells and Dr. Duharas Wim Sils and Takeshi. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Good evening. Pleasure to meet you guys. <laughs> okay. Hey, Warlux, you just took my job. No, 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 it's okay. I mean, uh, I fear no, okay. to uh, listen well, to... I, I think Ipe's going to come. He's going to introduce you, huh, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's so, fine. So like... then you just introduce Ipe, okay? No, All no, right? it's fine. It, it, it's fine. Uh, we introduce Vinko here. Yeah, yeah. Vinko <laughs> is the man here. Yes. No one else... Okay, so we just want us to go to you, you, uh, right, right to you. <clears throat> okay, that's no big deal. Uh, today, uh, Dr. Yu Jing Liao will translate the Chinese for Professor Vinko. No, no, Vinko, uh, from last night, we we sent out the advertisement for today's webinar, and uh, there's a lot already uh, more than one thousand and six hundred uh, audience read the uh, advertisement, and uh, some some department they still waiting for uh, together for your webinar for your presentation. Yeah. Okay, four minutes. Vinko is one of the most famous neurosurgeons in China. Yeah. Everyone knows his name. If you are a neurosurgeon, you should know Vinko's name. Otherwise, we're not the neurosurgeon. <laughs> Oh. You know, you guys always joking. 
No, 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 it's not choking. Everyone knows your name. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so three minutes. John Bennett, Miami Beach. Three minutes. Uh, yeah, three minutes. I'm just seeing a pipes coming here. Oh, well, it looks bumped up again. So, so you uh, Binko is going to give a presentation, and then you just questions after, right? I I give a short introduction, and then we'll go. Okay, yeah? two okay. minutes. Yeah, two minutes. Television. Come here, Mary, Okay, one minute. One minute. Okay, here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting for Neurosurgical TV. Uh, today we have uh, U.S. China Neurosurgery Grand Rounds uh, with a special guest, Binko Dolenk. Before I turn it over to Yuha, let me uh, thank the translators and introduce them. Uh, hello, Ben. How are you doing? Yeah. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. And and uh, Takashi. Hi. Good evening. Uh, from uh, I'm Dr. Kong from Hi. Tokyo, Japan. Uh, Japanese. Uh, Japanese. Uh, Japanese. That's great. Okay, great. Okay, uh, you. Uh, thank you very much, and it's all yours. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, good friend. After Christmas break. We are here again, so with Vinko Dolenz, with one of the most famous neurosurgeons in the world. Like I always say, there are very few people who would change the world, but Vinko Dolenz is one of them. And he made the route to Kavanaugh Sinus, and coming from an extremely small country, Slovenia, he could manage uh, behind, even behind the uh, iron cart, he could manage. So, Slovenia is uh, extremely small country, even smaller than Finland, where I'm coming from. So, between one and two million people, 
became independent, 91. Ljubljana, I've been visiting. It was a very nice visit in Ljubljana. Everyone in Slovenia knew Pinko's name. So you had just to ask, where is Pinko? And then they will show you. So this is Pinko Dolans. One of the most famous neurosurgeons in the world, coming from a small country, had a breakthrough all around the world and has been operating around the world. He was also in Helsinki many years, operating on, doing beautiful calpase surgery. And this is Winko Dolenz. So let's give him a speech. He will speak about common of science uh, tumors now uh, with the experience of more than 3,000 cases. This is an experience no one else in the world can repeat that. Okay, Pinko, go ahead. Okay. Perfect. Uh Thank you very much, uh, Juha, and uh, the other members of the team. Uh, you are helping to that this can happen. This is my privilege and honor to be invited to your grand rounds. Um, <clears throat> today, I would like to share with you my lifetime experience in cavernous sinus humors uh, treatment. Uh, uh, so the title is Central Skull Base at Tumors, actually the cavernous sinus tumors. But first of all, I have to mention that the, the, the cavernous sinus is in the central skull base and has its connections uh, free connections to the other compartments. And uh, so the tumors can enter into the cavernous sinus by direct spreading from cella, then along the cranial nerves three, five, and six, but also by direct invasion of the cavernous sinus through the walls from the bones at the, at the skull base. Uh, there, if you talk about the entrances, then we have to talk also about the exits. Of course, this is two way roads to the orbit, to the cella, to the posterior fossa. The cavernous sinus is named as a suite in the hotel. So it signifies, uh, this is uh, the uh, title, the, the name of two rooms connected. And from the cavernous sinus, the tumor can uh, pass to the orbit, through the superior orbital fissure. It can pass also to the cella and it can go into the bony sinuses and even extradurally by direct uh, 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 extension. Today, I would like to talk about the benign tumors of the central skull base. It is clear that any malignant tumor from the vicinity, from other compartments can come in, but I would like to focus on benign so-called benign tumors. And these are pituitary tumors, large and giant, giant uh, which are spreading beyond the cella. Then trigeminal neurinomas, chordomas, chondrosarcomas, and chondromas, hemangiomas, cavernomas, polycetoma, and even thrombosis of the cavernous sinus can be listed. And then, the most important uh, group 
are meningiomas at the skull base in the cavernous sinus. Large antituitary adenomas beyond the cella, you see, they count up to 24%. Uh, and there is a tricky spread of the tumor from the cella into the cavernous sinus where they can pass freely to the cavernous sinus and then they can spread along the CN3 intradurally, causing the splashing of the third nerve over the surface of the tumor. And the tumor is pinching uh, the nerve against the sharp edge of the dura. How it looks like, this is cella, and where the dural ring and the proximal ring are coming together, they are forming the lateral membrane of the cella, cellar compartment. But there are some windows where the tumor can freely go out into the cavernous sinus. Here is the artery, and then it goes along the artery and along the third nerve posteriorly. And it can come. And it does come many times into the intradural space behind the posterior uh, 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 clinoid process. Now, the question is how to get the tumor from cella out from uh, transvenodal space. It's clear and easy. How to get it from the cavernous sinus? It is also possible, but it is difficult to get the tumor out by transvenodal approach when it is behind the posterior clinoid process. Because it comes along the third nerve through the uh, uh, oculomotor trigon, and then it comes into the posterior fossa, bulging here and pushing the third nerve up. up upwards against the, the sharp edge of the dura. So the question is, what surgical approach? I do not like to uh, discuss with endoscopic specialists about the surgery in the, in the cella, and even in the cavernous sinus when the tumor is soft, but I think that when the tumor is in the posterior fossa, behind the posterior clinoid process, it is better to use the transcavernous extra and intradural approach. Then, this is the approach, just a diagram. We open the, the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus, we visualize the third, the fourth nerve, and V1 and V2. And then we can enter the uh, cavernous sinus uh, on the lateral side of the third nerve and medially to the fourth nerve. We remove the tumor as much as we can. In the next step, we push the fourth nerve medially and then we come to the carotid artery. We can mobilize the medial loop of the carotid. We can clean the tumor on the medial aspect of it. Then we go over the medial uh, loop of the carotid and we come toward the sixth nerve and the deep parts of the cavernous sinus and we can remove it uh, completely. And uh, we can remove also by this approach the tumor which is in the in the cella and in the cavernous sinus, as you can see here. Or another case, before and after, here. And another one, like this, here is empty again, and then we can, uh, no, that's good now. And, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no,
Okay. This is how we approach. We are on the right side. And the inner layer of the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus is still in place, covering the nerves. This is V2, or V1. V1 is this, V2 is this. The dura was spilled off from the lateral wall. I'm cutting now the inner membrane of the lateral wall between the V1 and the fourth nerve in so-called Parkinson's triangle. And now I will come to the, to the tumor. These tumors are usually soft and with uh, small pressure against the, the nerves, you can enter the Parkinson's triangle. You see the fourth nerve here? And this is V1. We go a little bit further. Now we are removing the, the tumor from the cavernous sinus. There are some adhesions which can be cut. You just have to know where you are. This is V1. This is the fourth nerve. And the third nerve is hidden here. And underneath is the carotid artery. We are working now on the lateral side of the horizontal uh, carotid in the cavernous sinus. The carotid will be this way and then goes this way. The tumor is soft, as I said, and easily reachable and uh, extirpated. There is nothing underneath there. There is empty space. There is uh, the, the hole of the cavernous sinus. This is the carotid already. Now I'm going to the you see the carotid here? The carotid, which is coming from lateral loop upward to the medial loop. Some strength, some uh, adhesions. You have to cut this. And in this direction will be the sixth nerve coming from the posterior fossa through Dorelos canal or Dorelos space, as we call it. This is the carotid. Now, the carotid is free. This is the horizontal portion, and this is the medial loop, fixed here with the adhesion. We cut this. And then we have a free entrance between the carotid nerve and the fourth and the third nerve uh, into the cella. We can go both ways from the lateral side and from the medial side. I prefer to use here a little bit larger instruments uh, in order not to uh, damage the carotid. Now we are going toward the pituitary gland. Then we open the dura and we can press the diaphragm cell and push the tumor outward. And we can push it from intradural to extradural 
and we can remove the tumor from extradural side, from the cavernous sinus and from the cellar compartment. In this way, we preserve the diaphragm cell. And we work exclusively from the cavernous sinus and cellar compartment. My assistant is helping me and is pushing the diaphragm cell down. And I can clean in the cavernous sinus and in the cellar. So when the tumor is coming also more posteriorly and into the posterior fossa, pushing the uh, diaphragm cell and uh, spreading behind the, the, fur, the posterior channel process, I can remove it from there. When we visualize the pituitary stock, as you see here, this is the optic nerve, the pituitary stock, carotid is there, and the cavernous sinus is free, and also the cella is free. Then we put the, the fibri glue into the cavernous sinus, and we put the sutures on the dura. Then we come to the trigeminal neurinomas. They are exclusively extracavernous, and they account up to 5%. We operated uh, mostly virgin cases, 94%, and recurrent or rest tumors in 6%. When the tumor is uh, originating from the V1 or V2, then it will spread anteriorly. And due to the long standing compression, it destroyed the bone. And this tumor was found on a regular check in the school uh, when they tested uh, pupils for the vision. And uh, he was not aware of the, of the tumor. Later on, he was operated, of course, and the tumor removed completely. When the tumor is uh, located a little bit more posteriorly at the Gasserium ganglion, then it, has, it can spread anteriorly and posteriorly. Anteriorly and also posteriorly. When it is originating from below the root of the fifth nerve, it will spread exclusively into the posterior fossa. This is the case, and this, or such a case, removed completely from the uh, retrosigmoid approach. For this one, we don't need to go subtemporal. But when the tumor is uh, larger and uh, uh, is also in the uh, in the uh, middle fossa and posterior fossa. We can remove it uh, by subtemporal approach. We go through the apex of the pyramid, and this is the situation after removal of surgery of tumor, complete removal. So sometimes we have a, a situation that the patient experience sudden attack of pain in the distribution of the fifth nerve. What does it mean? It means a major bleeding into the tumor, like this. Usually, if the patient is not operated, this bleeding will subside in two to three months. And I have uh, some patients, they were not able to get operated and uh, they are uh, without pain after three months un until the next bleeding. 
Mayo Curve. The trigeminal neuronoma may, might be very close to the bony sinuses at the bottom. They can destroy the bone and also the membrane, and they can cause CSF leak. Then we have a sympathetic fiber tracts, schwannomas. They are exclusively intracavernous. They are very few, and they are completely different at surgery in comparison with trigeminal neuronoma, which are usually soft, sometimes cystic, and easily to be removed. While these tumors are very hard, and uh, here is such a case. I operated uh, once in Helsinki. You have provided this patient and a huge tumor, huge tumor on the left side. You see the carotid is pushed downward. Uh, one would think that this is very difficult to operate. No, it is not so difficult because the tumor, which is exclusively in intracavernous, does push carotid on one side, usually downward, and the nerves uh, upward. So the nerves are on the surface of the tumor. We can go a little bit faster. So we remove the sphenoid ring here, the then anterior clinoid process. And then we remove the, the wall over the orbit. Here, this is the temporal lobe. Only a small portion of the temporal lobe over the tumor. We go down to the to the lateral wall. So far, nothing difficult. The difficulties start later on when we try to remove the tumor. We can easily peel off the, the dura from the lateral wall. Now we are approaching the second division of the fifth nerve. And we are exploring the tumor. This is the tumor. We are just peeling off the dura away from the lateral wall. To protect the brain, we put a stitch and then we pull up the dura and we can visualize the whole mass of the tumor, which is huge. Then we start reducing the tumor because we know where we enter the cavernous sinus space. And we know that there is only tumor below the nerves and above the artery. This tumor was extremely hard. You have provided a special instrument to cut it off, but also this one was not uh, uh, very helpful. The third nerve here over the tumor, and uh, we one here. Look, this is we one, we two, 
and underneath is a sick nerve. Now we remove a larger piece of the tumor away from the carotid, which will be seen now in a moment. Look, this is carotid now down there. So these are the nerves. And the carotid, and that's it. Now we come to chordomas, chondrosarcomas, and chondromas. They are also a quite sizable group, 4% of all tumors at the skull base. And uh, we were operating on 70% virgin cases and 30% of recurrent tumors. Um, Chordomas, chondrosarcomas, and chondromas, they cannot be completely resected. None of them. Why? Because they originate from the uh, joints between the bones at the skull base. And it was also found that the uh, gamma knife was not effective or effective on these tumors. So we found together with some people from Boston that the proton beam radiotherapy is, effect, uh, is uh, very efficient. And uh, I remember the first case I operated in Zurich together with Professor Yashargil, whom he operated before and could not get into the sinus, so he sent the patient back home. This was a young uh, Italian patient, a very charming boy, singer. And when I came to Zurich, he invited him to come back. We operated on him and then removed the tumor. We were very, very happy. Professor Yashagi was satisfied, and so was I and uh, the patient. But one year later, the tumor came back. So, what to do? We reoperate. And then again the tumor. And then again the tumor came back. So we finally realized we have had <laughs> No, no, no. So we were then combined the surgical treatment with proton beam. And the politic is that uh, uh, that we remove the tumor which is bulging into the brain and we leave the skull base, which can be treated then later on with the, the proton beam, like here. Here. And another case of the surgery here. In some cases, we find these tumors incidentally. People are uh, sent to imaging for trauma or whatever, and they find the, the, the tumors which the patient were not aware of. And some patients could not accept surgery. And uh, we were following them and nothing happened for some years. So not every tumor need to be, to be operated. This is such a case. And again, and again, partial removal. And then the base is heated by the proton beam. 
And again, the space is created by a resection of the tumor in front of the brain stem. And uh, later on, the skull base is treated by, by uh, proton beam. Here we have a, a very interesting case, a young girl who had the squint at three years of age. And then there was successful physiotherapy for two years. And then the squint disappeared. Second time, the squint appeared in 16 years when the girl was teenage and worsening despite so-called physiotherapy. Father, mother, and the patient, daughter, teenage, came to me and they were fighting in front of me. Father wanted the girl to be operated, mother and daughter, they said, no, no, we will continue with physiotherapy. It came to my mind that I had a slide where I found an aneurysm on the carotid artery in the cavernous sinus. And then over this aneurysm was the sixth nerve fixed with sympathetic nerves, sympathetic cords. So I was reasoning that the sixth nerve, which was this, this, uh, this uh, distended over this bulging, could glide on one or the other side while the lesion was extending, when the sympathetic nerves were torn. And so happened with this girl. So we convinced her to operate. This is before operation, this is after operation. And uh, the same case before and after. And again, the same case before and after. Later on, she had a proton beam, and now she is living happy life. Rare benign lesions in the cavernous sinus, hemangioma, cavernoma, polycytoma, and even thrombosis. For hemangioma, I just would like to mention that they are exclusively in the cavernous sinus. They don't go beyond. And what is important, they cannot be removed with piecemeal technique because with each bite, you cause new hemorrhage and you may exsanguinate the patient. So it's better to coagulate the hemangioma and dissect it from the nurse and then remove it as a whole.